Yeah. yeah. It was pretty chilly here today, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm Just go up there and hit got it. Are you out at the ranch? No, I'm at home. Uh. I was out there this afternoon. Good. Hello, Ray. Hi there. Hey, boy. Hey there. Hello, Clay. Hello, Clay. How y'all doing? Good, good. Hello, Craig. Hey, how you doing, Jay? I'm good. You okay? Doing excellent. Thank you. Excellent. I uh, things up there in, in brown, whatever. Field. It's cold and it's brown. It's it's good. <laughs> well, it's, it's getting cold here ourselves. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it'll get down to 17 tonight. So. Oh, no. Whoa. You keep Whoa. it up there. We don't want that down here. You keep that up there. Yeah. Yeah, like yesterday I was running around in shorts and short sleeve shirt and today I bundled it up. So Texas weather. Hello. Hi, Hi Jenny. Jenny. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. How's your, how's your new life? <laughs> it's good. He's just over here watching videos and it's good. It's busy, but it's good. You know. How are things with you, Dr. John? Let's see who is there. There's Jenny. Uh huh. Jay. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Jay. Doc, Dr. John. Dr. John, how are you? That was my favorite artist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm doing good. How about you? Good. You're still happy with your picture, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Brings back good memories. <laughs> oh, good. There's Daryl. Hi, Daryl. Hello, Daryl. Hey, Jay. Hey, Daryl. How you doing? It's Craig Waters. Doing well, how about you? Doing real good. Thank you. Keeping out of trouble. <coughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> Just want the weather, weather to settle down so I can get out in my garden. Hello, Ellie. Is it four in the morning? She left. Yeah. How many hours ahead of us are they? They're eight, eight, right eight now. now, isn't it? Yeah, 
Yeah. Seven eight. hours. Seven hours. No, it's eight right now until they it's eight now. They like savings difference. Hey, Ellie. Hello, Ellie. Oh, she's not answering. Hello, Ray. Hey. There's Ellie. Seem to hear anyone. The world traveler is here. It's official now, Ellie. That about eight hours ago, she said she lost her voice and couldn't talk. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> I hope we've got a little bit of a back to this. Why? Yeah. Hi, Janice. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Craig. Hello, Dr. Green. Hi, how's everyone doing? <laughs> oh, there was Shelly stuck her head in and out. Yeah, she's over on the sofa and has the uh, put up on the screen on the big TV. She's watching it. Mm. I'm, I'm putting well, Jeremy on the spot. We I'm... got about half the team that are signed up, signed on tonight, so that's good. Sorry we had to delay the presentation from Tuesday. I'm, I'm putting Jeremy's face on real quick so he can be seen. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Is he going with you too this summer? He is not. And mm -hmm. I am I'm not a hundred percent sure that I will be there this summer, but okay. I am here right now. So we will see. Well, I'm glad you've trained people well. I hope so. <laughs> we'll see. It's not a for sure no, but I am here right now. We will see what happens. Well, you show up, Betty will make you bumpy cookies over there, so. Mm. Well, I think I'm gonna give us a couple more minutes. I think we've got a few more that's just now signing on, so give everybody just a chance to get signed on, then we'll, we'll get started. Hi, Ray. Hi there. <clears throat> Are you going to mute us or do we have to do that ourselves? Um, it'll work either way. If you get too annoying, I'll mute you, but otherwise. I, you, you <laughs> <laughs> I'm the annoying. Y'all may want to mute me. Have. That may be the thing that uh, somebody needs to take control of here. I'm just hopeful Ellie's going to be able to speak a little bit here in a minute. Can everybody see, do I have that uh, medical mission screen? Is it showing for everybody? Yep. Yes. Well, let's go ahead and start here. I haven't seen anybody sign on the last minute or so, so I'm, I'm assuming that we've got the bulk of us here. That's great. We probably got, it looks like a team of roughly 50 right now. Uh, we can certainly take a few more and we got room for it. We'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute. Um, most of you, I think that are signed on or have gone before, but we've got several new ones that are signed on. So we'll spend a little bit of time at the front giving a little bit of an orientation and a few items that may be repetitive for those that have gone before, but hopefully it'll be helpful for those that are, that are new. Got on the screen now just a map of Africa and down towards the southern part of it is where Zambia is. And then there's a line that goes to the southern province and that is the area where we will be conducting uh, our medical missions this year. We say that what the purpose of it is, we want to have a day of dignity in the name of Jesus uh, for everybody that goes. And that uh, 
that can mean a lot of different things, but the main thing is we're going in the name of Jesus. Practical assistance gives dignity to people who may not uh, otherwise have that opportunity. The main purpose is we're going to try and share the good news of Jesus Christ and strength <laughs> in the area. Uh, secondary purpose is to give quality medical care while giving each Zambian a day of dignity. And we use, uh, I think, in many ways, this mirrors a lot of the ways in which Jesus conducted his ministry. He went around the villages uh, preaching and teaching and healing. And uh, that's mentioned several times in the gospel. That's a lot of what we do. We're preaching, we're teaching, and we're providing some healing to the people that are there. Where we go is a place called uh, Namuyanga Mission. Uh, it is near Colombo, Zambia. It's about uh, a few miles just south of there. And it is a big complex. It has a lot of different things going on. We just show up for a couple of weeks, three weeks, and do some uh, medical mission there. But there are a lot of other things that are happening. And when you go there, you'll get a chance to see it. There is a training college, a school of nursing. Uh, there are some high schools there. Uh, basic schools, or elementary schools, hospital now, uh, aided clinics, a radio station, there's some orphan care, uh, farm and ranch operation. And there's a lot of a lot of things that are going on year round, and hopefully we'll have a little time over there. If you want to see some of those up close, uh, you'll have an opportunity to do that uh, and see kind of the bigger picture of what's happening in that area. When we actually go and conduct the medical mission, there's a whole variety of things and areas in which there are opportunities to work, ways in which we need to try and uh, we've tried to break it down into some areas to streamline, let people work in some areas that they're particularly interested in or better at. And uh, also it lets us means that we don't have to be a jack of all trades. We get to focus on the things which we seem to interest us, be good at, and let some others do some other things. We have a triage area. Those people will check uh, things like blood pressure. They'll check the temperature, check the weight. But that will have that reported then for all of the, the doctors who need to see it. We have some supplies we take. People need to be able to have access to them. Uh, we have a dental area. We, the, most, a lot of what they do is pulling teeth. We use a lot of Zambian dentists. John Estes kind of heads that mm -hmm. up here. Children's classes, we have called them. Many of the adults may be getting some medical care. There's an opportunity for some children's classes and Bible teaching to take place with them. Um, there's what we call an advanced team. And when we go out, we'll have two different locations where we'll conduct clinics this year. And we typically send a group of people out in advance. That they set up the camp. Uh, they set up the, the areas where we'll be working. And then the main team shows up a few hours later to help do some of the final touches of setting up the clinic for the next day. Uh, part of what we do is, is they'll have a spiritual area. That's the, one of the main things. We've got a great team. They actually pick the locations we're going to. And they, uh, when we, people were designed the clinic so that when we get to the end of it, as patients have gone through and got their medicine, the next step right after them is the spiritual area where they have an opportunity to have some Bible studies, have some prayer, have some counseling, or whatever their needs might be. We use some local people there also do things like cervical cancer screening. They've got uh, that opportunity to set up and we've actually been able to, to do not only some screening, but doing some minor cures of those if they catch it early enough. Physical therapy and some referrals. So a local Zambian that does some physical therapy. Have a have the ability to uh, then uh, refer things to if somebody has a need that's greater than what we can take care of. There's some other medical opportunities in the area that we can refer to. Pharmacy. There's a lot of activity that goes through the pharmacy area. We bring a lot of medicine in, and uh, it's well organized, and that way the doctors can can prescribe just about anything that they need. Uh, few times we may not have what exactly is needed, but they are nearly always we're able to do something for what the, the doctors need to have prescribed for the patients. Wound care, that's an area that you might not think of as, as being that important. But there's a lot of significant uh, medical activity that happens around the wound care. Uh, sometimes small scrapes and burns and things here, we can take care of pretty quickly, but if they're not uh, taken care of over there, they can 
become infected and become worse. So some of the things that here we might could handle fairly easily, but they may get uh, to be a lot worse over there in the wound care people uh, deal with those. Optical, the eyes, we they hand out a lot of glasses and they do some screening for uh, cataracts as well. To keep all the patients that come, we'll have see two, maybe 3,000 patients a day. And so there's a lot of effort that's gone into trying to organize how the patients go through the process when they start out to be uh, figuring out whether they need it there, what type of ailment they have and what starts spreading about at the very beginning as far as categorizing them. Then they go through the triage and, or the eyes or the dental. And so they gradually start getting down. As they get down the, through the clinic, they get to the, the medical stations or the dental stations or eye stations or wherever. We've, we've kind of got a process and we try and keep that fairly well organized. I'll be operating out of a schools. And so the doctors tend to have several stations set up inside a single classroom. And so part of what we have to do is make sure we keep the doors clear, the entrance ways. And as soon as one doctor is through with one group of patients, uh, we've got another uh, family ready to sit down with them to, with to kind of maximize their time. Of course, we can't do anything without the kitchen. They uh, they do a great job of cooking all the meals. And uh, as I've told several people, this is one of the best camping trips you can go on. It's uh, you've got a group that sets up your tents. You got another group that cooks all your meals. And you just get to focus on the area in which you're primarily responsible for working in. We talked about the medical team. We also have a lab in VCT. That's an area where they can do some testing and and give some results back to the doctors there. So there's some other things as well, but those are some of the primary areas that, uh, that, that we have available and work with. As I mentioned at the first, we still have some space available. Uh, so if you've got some, some friends or some acquaintances or people you think might uh, be good to participate, uh, feel free to talk to them and we can get them the information forms, try and get them answer whatever questions they need to have. There are, Forms are available on the website here, uh, but we're happy to email them to you as well if that'll be helpful. We're also just, by the way, we're going to try and record this particular presentation. We'll post it up uh, at some point soon, or if you need to want to go back and review anything, you're welcome to. And we'll make a PDF of these slides and send it out so that if you want to see these links that are here or any information on it, uh, you'll at least have some access to it. Uh, the general calendar that we'll be following is going to be a little different this year, uh, partly because we're, we're going to just two locations. And by going to two locations, it means we have to work around the school schedule a little bit differently. Uh, the schools can't be closed more than two days uh, at any one time. So we have to make sure that we have coordinated our schedules around the weekends in a way that we, uh, we don't monopolize or we don't uh, cause them any trouble with their school system. So the plan right now is we, those that want to go early and help out, they'll be leaving on June the 26th, be arriving then on Wednesday uh, the 28th. The main team will then be departing the next week on Monday, July the 3rd, should arrive in Nongweanga on July the 5th. Uh, we'll use the Thursday will be, what well, used to be Sunday under the prior schedule, Thursday will be the, the day that we do the orientation and get through the final packing and get ready to, to leave the next day. Friday, we'll travel to the first clinic site. We'll have a clinic there on uh, Saturday and Sunday and on Monday, half day. And Monday then, a little afternoon, we'll pack up and head back to uh, Namuyanga. We'll have a free day then in Namuyanga on Tuesday. There'll be some opportunities then for those who want to do some things around Namuyanga uh, there. And also, if we need to reload or repack anything, that's an opportunity there as well. Wednesday, we'll start doing the same process again for the second clinic. We'll travel there. Third, we'll have clinic days on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday morning, and then come back to Nongweanga Saturday night. <coughs> Sunday will be a day that we uh, then travel to uh, Livingston, uh, probably do the Sunset Cruise as we've done in the past. Uh, Monday will be a Toby Game Park. Tuesday will be a free day, and then Wednesday will depart. Uh, from Livingston to fly back and on Thursday should arrive back to the U.S. So I said it's a little bit different calendars, but we moved a few days, uh, shifted just to accommodate what, so we can take care of the school systems uh, requirements over there. Um, we're still working on some of the travel arrangements. We've got some quotes on 
several different routings uh, through British Air and through Qatar Airways. It looks like the pricing is going to be best using the British Air route going through London. Um, and both of the ways we're looking now, we're probably not going to need to spend an overnight in uh, Johannesburg. But if for some reason anybody does, and if you're making your own arrangements and you need to overnight in Johannesburg for some reason, we do ask that you stay at one of the hotels that's actually at the airport. Uh, for security reasons, it's not good at this time to get out in the, into Johannesburg. There's a couple of good hotels that are there at the, at the airport. To give you information on them. Please feel free to contact me and we'll be happy to get you whatever information you need. Uh, for your passport, just make sure you've got some blank pages at the back. They say you've got to have two, but that really means probably closer to six because when you go in, you'll need two. And the day we go to Toby, coming back, you'll need two blank. And then if for some reason there is a, you have to do some type of an emergency evacuation or something, you probably need another two blank pages as well to be able to get into South Africa. So each country, these countries these days are requiring two blank pages to be able to get in. And because of the travel, that probably end up being six blank pages. So if you need to get that taken care of, get some more pages added or get a new passport, uh, you need to get done fairly quickly. Um, also, there's some vaccinations that uh, need to be made, uh, hepatitis A, malaria, uh, typhoid. Make sure you're up to date and current on those. Just check your yellow card that you have to make sure. As far as COVID vaccinations, currently you're not required to have it. However, if you don't have a have been vaccinated for uh, COVID, you will have to have a negative test uh, before you depart. Uh, be able to show, show that. That's the current rules anyway. It could change before we leave. We will be getting some medical evacuation insurance for everybody. That's just one of the precautions we do. We've occasionally had to use it with as many people as we've taken over the years. Hopefully we don't, but we want to make sure that if something does happen to someone, we've got the ability to uh, transport you to a, a good hospital. It's probably going to be in South Africa and to have insurance then to be able to cover the expenses uh, related to it. And again, that, those, that will be purchased by the team as part of the expenses that, that you're paying in to cover. There are, you know, it could be various uh, health situations and issues happening that, uh, and there's several of them listed on the screen as possibilities. We try and monitor them and stay on top of it. If there's anything that we need to be particularly aware of, we'll do our best to communicate whatever that situation is to you and uh, as soon as we do know about it. But we are going into a part of the world where there's some different diseases, different uh, circumstances. You just need to be aware that it's going to be different than being here. One of the things you may want to consider is to enroll in the U.S. government's uh, STEP or STEP program. That's their Smart Traveler Enrollment Program. You can go online to them, and it's basically what it is is you register uh, with the U.S. government, let you, them know that you're going to be overseas, what country you're in, and contact uh, information about where you'll be. If for some reason something happened in the country and the uh, government felt like they needed to try and contact U.S. citizens that are in the country, this is a mechanism they have to try and locate you and pass information along. And so when you, if you do that, uh, it's probably a good idea to, to register it. Uh, the contact information will be at the Namuyanga Mission uh, in Colombo. Here's an interesting development that happened a couple of months ago. Is it looks like at this time we're not going to need to get a visa to go into Zambia. Uh, Zambia suspended the visas for U.S. citizens and several other countries uh, a few months ago, mainly to try and boost some of the tourism and other type of travel going to Zambia. Uh, it's definitely, there's a chance that they may say that if those that need to have a business visa, they might reinstate it. We're not, we haven't heard that yet, but just be aware we're not going in on a tourist visa. We're going in on a business arrangement. And currently they're not requiring those to have visas, but if something changes, we'll try and get that information out to you as, uh, as soon as we can. But good news is right now, it doesn't look like we have to have a visa. Just a U.S. passport is all you will need. Uh, we do need uh, the information forms. Uh, everybody fill out. We've gotten a lot of them in. That's been great. Uh, but we do, if you haven't gotten them in, uh, please get some returned to us. 
and just mention if there's more than one member of your family going, we really need an information form from each member of the family uh, going. We'll also be needing copies of your passport uh, pages and need the health form, health forms here, and that needs to be filled out. And what this is for, if something does happen to you over there, of course, we've got some great doctors that are traveling with us. But for them to be able to give you some care and make sure you're they're taking doing things that are appropriate for you if something does happen to you, they really need some medical history information on you. Uh, and that's what the purpose of this form is, is so that if something does happen, medical people over there that are not familiar with your case history can look at this form and, uh, and better serve you. Uh, we will again have some luggage tags, these bright yellow uh, tags that say ZMM. If you uh, have gone in the past, we're kind of assuming you may still have some of these. All the new members will definitely get uh, uh, these luggage tags. But if you need luggage tags, don't have yours, can't find yours, let us know. We're happy to, happy to get them to you. Uh, we will also be giving a, a T-shirt to everybody that participates. And so we usually mail those uh, together. There will be a possibility if you've ever traveled that your luggage might not arrive at the same time you arrive. Um, we have developed a process to try and take care of that. And we'll also give you a form that looks a little bit like what's on the screen and ask that you take that with you when you travel. And if you arrive in Livingston and your luggage doesn't get there, then we'll ask you to fill out this form. We'll have a Zambia Medical Mission representative that will collect any of these forms we're going to go ahead and take the people to uh, to the Namuyanga Mission. You'll have, of course, your carry-on luggage with you. But if your check luggage didn't make it, then we it'll probably be the next day before it comes, and we'll have some people available to pick that up and to get that uh, transported to to Namuyanga when it arrives. Of course, when we travel there, we get to Namuyanga. I mentioned we'd be going out to the clinics twice. We have a whole convoy. A, a whole variety of types of vehicles that uh, make that trip. They are big trucks that carry uh, supplies. We have people movers that carry people. We have a yellow bus. We have some individual ones. And it, it, a lot of things can happen on these dirt roads. We, we've gotten stuck several times. We've had to, one time when we got close and we were, had some problems and most of the people said, look, we're this close. We're just gonna walk the rest of the way. So they walked about a half a mile to get to the final camp stop. Uh, so there's just a whole variety of transportation options, but we do bring some mechanics with us. We've done a pretty good job of, of taking care of the vehicles and getting people there each year. But here again, there's always a chance that things can go, go sideways a little bit. Bottom left, it mentions something called a geography stop. And that is essentially a, a bathroom break on the way. And we'll try and stop in places where there's some cover with the trees. And we'll have the women on one side and the men on the other side. And take a restroom break and we'll get back on and keep uh, keep traveling. When we get to the uh, clinic site, they will have, the advanced team will have a lot of the tents set up. As you can see, the picture is not a real big one, but at the top of this one, there is a lot of tents out there. You can see the vehicles that we use kind of surround it. We form a perimeter usually with the vehicles with our tents on the inside. And that's, uh, that's pretty much what it looks like. As you ride, though, it, there's some comments on the left. Uh, the trips will probably take maybe four, five, six hours uh, each way. So you you may want to uh, have something that's a little more cushioned to sit on if you want to. It may be dusty. Uh, so you may want to bring some mask with you to keep some of the dust down and getting into it. Uh, probably be a good idea to have some toilet paper with you uh, for the trip, uh, hand wipes and sanitizer. Uh, it's likely or possible that we will arrive after dark a time or two, and so you may want to have your flashlight uh, with you on the, on the transportation as we as we go. Um, when we get there, you will well. We're sleeping in the tents. There's you'll need obviously at night. There's no electricity there. It gets dark, so you'll need to have flashlight with you uh, on the trip. Might be good to have a fairly comfortable sleeping bag. Uh, it says on the screen 20 degrees or lower. I'm not sure it has to be that low. It, it has gotten down into the 30s at night uh, on occasion. So if you are, if you think that's kind of cold and want to make sure you stay warm, you want to make sure you have a good sleeping bag then. They want a sleeping mat. Uh, the 
have some toilet paper with you. We bring a lot of toilet paper, but occasionally it uh, may, may have run out at the particular place where you are to time and needing it. Uh, you need a pillow or something right inside your tent. Uh, and I, on the information forms, if you've got a preferred tent mate, there's a place to put that in. So just uh, just let us know. Ellie is going to, if she, her voice is, is working, she is going to cover a few slides now here, maybe, we'll see if we can. <laughs> Ellie, I think you may have two. Give some feedback yeah. from you there. Okay. Uh oh, there she is. We'll say your there you go. Uh, yeah, but I don't think I have a good, my voice is not good enough to talk. Okay. Well, I will try and cover some of this and uh, I'll feel free to laugh because this is an area that's really pretty much Ellie's specialty right here, but I'm going to try and cover some of them. I'm sure sorry she's lost her voice. Uh, we're going to need her to have her voice when we have the medical mission. I know that. But, um, if you have any particular dietary requirements, or we uh, would like to try, if you could let us know about it, there may be a limitations as to what we can or can't do. We have a fairly uh, standard uh, menu that we try and use that is based upon the ingredients that are available uh, in the country, where you don't, aren't able to sell a lot of things, but anything that's gonna be fresher as far as the fruits and uh, things like that. We, we have to get it over there. If you do have some very special needs, uh, uh, like a gluten-free or something like this, it might be good for you to bring some, some food for yourself because it's likely that some of the things that we're cooking out in the bush anyway will not be able to accommodate all of your, any of those particular needs. But if you do have something, if you please let us know and we will see if there's something we can do and let you know whether or not we'll be able to. We uh, were able to send a container uh, back a few weeks ago and your personal box or trunk uh, hopefully will be on it. Uh, we hope that'll be arriving by early May. and We'll try and keep you informed of uh, what the status of that is. Uh, if you, and Ellie, if I say this wrong, you might try and, and, and jump in and uh, correct me here, but uh, if you did send anything on the container or if you left something there in uh, Zambia, James ne Estes needs to know uh, know that so that he can make sure and try and get that, uh, whatever sent on the container that he gets it. What we're trying to do is wherever you're gonna be staying, we're gonna try and have that uh, container uh, trunk or box, whatever it is, delivered to the place where you'll be staying. So it'll be there when you get there. Some people also leave some things there and so they could access it uh, the next year when they come. So whether you have set something on the container or if you have left something there, James really needs to know that and kind of have a description of it here. Um, so if you need one of these forms sent to you, uh, let us know, we'll be happy to get it to you. So that it's uh, first form here was things that were sent on the container the next one is if you had anything left that you want to have access to when you get there. Uh, we really need to know that. Then we've got a section here of things to uh, what you may want to bring. We've talked about a few of these. Uh, the team booklet that was made available and sent out. Please look at that. That has a pretty good list of, of things to uh, what you might need. It has uh, some schedules and dates and other information. Um, obviously, though, what you'll need to have with you is your passport. It's good to have a copy of your passport, not in the same place as your passport, but in another location uh, in case uh, it gets lost. Uh, flashlights and batteries. 
any of your personal medications, you'll certainly need to bring that uh, with you on the carry-on uh, so that it doesn't get lost. It'll be on your baggage that you carry with you. If you uh, think you need some snacks or want to have some available, you're going to need to bring that. Lip balm is a good thing to, to have because of the it will, even though it's wintertime over there, the sun shines pretty bright. It can, it will be outdoors, and so chapstick is a pretty good thing. Sunscreen and a hat will be good in the middle of the day. It typically gets pretty warm and it's pretty hot for three or four hours in the afternoon. Now, having said it gets hot in the afternoon, the next line on here is a jacket. So that's because at night it does get pretty cool when the sun goes down. And so you need to think about it in layers uh, uh, so that you can Take a few layers off if it gets too hot and add a few layers on when it gets pretty warm. Uh, comfortable shoes will be doing a fair amount of walking and uh, so that needs to be there. If you have prescription glasses, you might wanna have a second uh, spare with you so that uh, if something happens to the first one, you've, uh, you've got a backup available. Certainly your Bible, you need to bring it. Uh, many people like to keep a journal, and so a notepad and pen or is very helpful. Uh, People you'll be staying with over there oftentimes want to know something about you and your family. And if you have a picture of you and your family, that they send to, they like to see that. So that might be something you want to have available. Uh, there will be time, you'll need something that'll wake you up, whether it's on your phone or travel alarm, something, because we'll have a fairly tight schedule that we tend to follow, particularly. And uh, if we're moving about a 150 people around, we really need to have everybody available to, to leave with the times to leave. Uh, one person is late, it delays the whole team, and that then can can affect the, the care we give to patients and, and other things, getting there after dark. And so if we've got a schedule, we really need to follow it, and part of that has to do with uh, uh, making sure you get up on time or ready to go when it's time to go. Oh, wet wipes, hand sanitizers, things like this, tissues are, are certainly a good thing to have with you. If you have any allergies, you might want to have some allergy medicine. You may well be a good idea to bring that. Um, the roads are, are dusty, and so when we have a lot of vehicles going on, that kicks up dust. And uh, if that's a problem to you, you may want to have some mask to be able to have some protection from it. And then at the night, we'll be at campfires, we'll be uh, around where the camp area is. The food will be cooked on campfires. There's usually uh, where we gather afterwards to eat or to have a meeting. Uh, there's usually two or three campfires around to kind of for, for warmth and for uh, a little bit of light. And so if that, sometimes the smoke from that can cause some problems, so just be aware of it. Uh, and again, if you have special dietary needs, feel free to communicate it. Um, we'll be staying with a lot of people with uh, some Zambians over there. And you may want to give them a small gift uh, to tell them thank you for the letting you stay with them. And sometimes you're trying to get some ideas about what you might want to, to have. I mentioned before, some a photo of you or your family is is uh, something they would appreciate. Uh, they also, so maybe something like a solar light, a solar flashlight, or something like that, because they can recharge have a way to recharge it with solar means where they might not have electricity to charge it. Uh, Maybe some dishes or silverware. Towels is a good thing. Uh, they like uh, pillows, bed sheets, some spiritual books. Uh, maybe some perfume, photo albums, frames. What uh, learns says bling bling. Uh, so something like that might be something that they might enjoy as well. Uh, Ellie's a lot better at describing these and, and talking about these, so you might want to email her to get uh, get some good ideas here or others that have have gone in the past. Oh, there we go. Right now, we think the visa of money, this, what money would you need to bring is the question for this slide. We used to have to bring cash for the visa. Right now, it looks like it's free. If it, if it uh, changes, we'll try and give you some advance warning of that and let you know. Uh, if you want to buy any curios or, or snacks or little things, you may want to have some money available to do that with. Uh, on the free day in uh, Livingston towards the end of the trip, there's a lot of tourist related activities, various elephants encounters, there's rafting, there's shopping. There's a hundred and plus, some of the activities are, are more than that, but they also uh, will take credit cards for most of those activities as well. 
and uh, said a Visa or a MasterCard is a good card to use. American Express seems to be difficult to use. There are some, a few ATMs, uh, Livingston has some. Oftentimes though, they may be, they could be out of money or they may not be working. So in fact, a lot of our experience has been those are not very reliable, uh, but that it might be workable and, and it might be a possibility to get cash there if you need it. But you may want to bring, bring some cash, with, a little bit of cash with you. Most of what is going to be expenditures. The only things really listed here would be about the only thing you need to spend money on. From the time you land at Livingston, we'll pick you up and take you out to Nomiaga Mission. All your meals will be covered, all your transportation is covered, all the housing is covered. Uh, and then when we're out doing the clinics, there's really not much opportunity to, to spend money out in the bush unless there's, there may be like a picture here that shows some uh, ladies who have made some baskets. And that may be a possibility. Sometimes some of the places we stay, there'll be some local people who have made some some baskets or other types of curios. They may be trying to sell them. And if you have an interest, uh, uh, you might want to have some cash available to, to buy some of those. There was a booklet that's been made available. If you haven't seen it or haven't gotten it yet, uh, email one of us and let us know. We can get it to you. Got a lot of good information in it. Ellie's been sending out your financial statement. Uh, I think about a week ago, you, you all should have received uh, uh, an email from her that had a statement on it, showed your balances. And of course, uh, most of the money is gonna be due here in the next few weeks. And if you need us to buy the plane tickets, we need to have enough money on hand when the plane tickets are being bought. Um, so we, uh, I'll maybe having to send some emails to some of you fairly soon, just making sure that uh, enough cash is on hand to buy the tickets. Our prices are going to be fluctuating. We've uh, about two weeks, three weeks ago, we got a quote that was really good, and I was kind of excited about it. And then two weeks later, those all of those prices were gone, and it's up, it's back up to where we estimated it was going to be before. So uh, prices are not guaranteed till we actually buy the tickets, and uh, I don't expect those to start going down anymore. Forward. If you want to try and raise some more funds through some friends, family, and others, we can provide a letter that you can use to, to send to, to help uh, help with that if you need it. Just uh, send Ellie an email and she can get you a copy of that letter. So thinking about phones and cell phones, um, it's better, it's certainly better now than it used to be. Uh, there's a lot more cell towers that have gone up. It seems like AT&T is probably one of the services that seems to work uh, best over there. Um, I know AT&T has an international day plan. I think there's some other carriers that do as well. The way AT&T works is you have to sign up for it with AT&T before you leave. And all it really does is AT&T just has a place marker on your account. They don't charge you anything unless you're overseas and use your phone overseas. And the way their plan works is they charge you $10 a day if you use the phone overseas. And if you do, that $10 then gets you whatever plan you've got in the U.S., you get the same plan in Zambia. Uh, if you want to just try it, there is some Wi-Fi that's available on the Namuyanga campus. It can be a little bit unreliable at times, especially if there's a lot of people trying to use it. It may be pretty slow. Uh, but it is a possibility. So you could try and just use the Wi-Fi. When we get out in the bush, there's probably not going to be Wi-Fi out there. There might be some cell coverage. But anyway, just to let you know that if you wanted to use your U.S. plan and you have ATT as your carrier, they have an, an option where for $10 a day, you get the same data plan in Zambia you have in the U.S. You have the same voice plan in Zambia that you have in the U.S. If you've got an unlocked phone, uh, maybe you would, want to take your U.S. SIM card out and put a Zambian SIM card in. Uh, if you want to try and do that, you can contact LA. She says SIM cards, talk time we purchased for about $20. Uh, if you have a local SIM card, people, and you give the number then out to the people back home, they can call you and you shouldn't be charged, incoming call for free, you wouldn't be charged for it. Uh, we also have some fairly cheap local phones. Uh, under thirty dollars, and so if you want to buy a local phone, that may be a possibility as well. Just a few things to kind of remember here is that they, 
There will be some more instructions on this, but we want you to mark all of your luggage. We'll have your luggage tags, but there'll also be some, we'll have various colors of, of tape that we'll give you instructions on and you'll mark on it where you'll be staying in Namuyanga. That's one color of your luggage. What tent you're in will be another color tape that's put on it. So we, we try and, and make that as in a way that the colors are color coded where they go. And also then the, the writing on it tells you which specific tent or which specific room you're in. Uh, hopefully we can get everything delivered to the right place in a timely manner. Your clothing, you may want to mark your clothing with your name on it. There will be some limited opportunities to have some ladies there uh, wash some of the clothing if you need something to wash. Maybe while we're out on one trip or we're gone, they can, they can do one set of clothing. Uh, but they will need to be marked so they can be sure and get them back, uh, back to you. Uh, because of some cultural reasons and expectations within the country, uh, the women do need to wear skirts or what's called chitangis. A chitangi is simply a piece of cloth that you can wrap around and it looks like, uh, looks like a skirt, but it's essentially what uh, you can see in the top picture there, the lady at the top, uh, that's a Zambian and it's, uh, she's wearing a chitangi. And the ladies at the bottom, they have chitangis that they're wearing while they're on a medical mission. If you want to wear uh, shorts or jeans or something like that underneath the chitangi, that is fine. Uh, but they do ask that we have the chitangis worn on the outside and that's what's visible. We will have some opportunities to, to put some information out on social media, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. And uh, typically we'll have somebody doing that. Ellie does it sometimes, sometimes some others. That we're out at, uh, on the clinic sites and also in non Young, we try and put some information out fairly regularly so the people back home can get a sense of what we're doing, what's happening, and kind of feel, they feel like that. So they're a little more connected to what's going on. Your family it may it may limit some of the information you feel like you need to get out to, to your family and friends as well. Well, here's a few uh, Tonga words. You'll probably learn some others. And these are are just uh, a sampling here of Wapona, how are you? Kabotu, good, fine. Kalumba, thank you. Wabuka, good morning. Hosea, good evening. And you'll probably have opportunities to, to use those and. Probably have opportunities to learn a few more and interact with them. But that's just a, just kind of a smattering to, to start with. And I mentioned earlier that everybody on the team will be getting a, a t-shirt. Uh, if you want, it'll be a short sleeve t-shirt, have the Sandy Medical Mission logo and something about this trip on it. Uh, if you want some additional ones, uh, you can get some additional short sleeve shirts for $10 and additional long sleeve ones for uh, $20. And some links on here if you need to contact James or Star to uh, to get that. And here again, we'll be providing a PDF of this, and then we'll, uh, so you'll have this information uh, pretty soon. We also try and put out a team directory in advance so that we get a lot of people coming from different places, a lot of new people. And sometimes it's helpful to be able to look at the pictures and know who they are. And so if uh, you've not sent a picture recently to, uh, to much less to send it to Star here or LA the, for me. We'll need a picture so we can get that in the pictorial directory. Uh, and a lot of people do like having it. It's very helpful, especially when you new or if you have a lot of new people there, you get a chance to maybe look at that pictorial directory before you go and have it with you and you can kind of get a better feel for who the people are. In addition to just doing the medical mission, there's a lot of other opportunities to uh, help out some of the people there. Because um, what we don't have, our expense money doesn't cover some of the cost of all the Bibles that are handed out. So if you'd like to help with uh, providing Bibles to people, uh, we do some separate fundraising to raise money for the Bibles. Uh, the medicine that we, we hand out, we provide probably a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of medicine. And we raise all of that money separate uh, from, from what's going into the, uh, the your expense money for the medical mission. So if you wanted to help with some of the medicine costs, that's available. Referrals, that is that is where we have people that come to us and they need something more than what we can provide in the, just in that short term of a medical mission. And we've got a process in place to screen them then to some of our contacts with the medical community in Zambia, they can usually say this, it's best if this person goes to location A or location B. 
and we try and help with some of their transportation money to make sure they get there. And we have a process in place to, 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 to make sure that they actually uh, arrive. But all of the assistance that we give to try and do referrals for people, that's all is, is money we've raised outside of the, the normal process here. Uh, food relief. There are places we've gone in the past that have been in the middle of droughts or not had access to adequate food. And so we have typically done uh, some food relief and if you want to help out with that, uh, that's an opportunity as well. We'll mention that when we go to a clinic site, there will be several thousand people that will come to get some medical treatment over the next two to three days while we're there. They typically will camp out around the clinic site and we try to provide them with a, a mealy meal food for while they're camped out waiting for service so that they at least have some food while they're waiting uh, to see us. There are some wheelchairs, people that have needs of wheelchairs, and there are some that we've had access to that are specifically designed for working in Africa uh, that are available over there at a reasonable cost. And so if you wanna help us find the wheelchairs, that is, uh, that is something that'd be very helpful as well. We do one of the fundraisers we do has to do around Mother's Day. And what it is, is a, is a clean delivery kit that we make available to expectant mothers so that they can uh, have a better chance of having a healthy birth out in the bush. They don't have any access to medical care. And so for $10, we can put enough material inside one of the packet that will uh, help them have the, some the ability to have a, a safer birth, a cleaner birth, and a better chance of uh, that the baby will survive and not have some complications from it. And so we usually do a fundraising uh, during the, usually around the uh, Mother's Day time because that seems to fit well with that. We have a great response from it. But this is, uh, this is one another opportunity to, uh, to help us with other needs over there. And inside those clean delivery kits, just to give you an example, of what's there is a list here, soap and washcloths, two pair of gloves, plastic sheet, a razor blade and string, matches and candle, some Tylenol extra treat pain reliever, prenatal vitamins, a baby blanket, and a newborn sleeper or ones. Got some pictures here of people having received those. Anyway, that's a, that's a great thing that we've been doing for several years. It's been well received and uh, certainly want to continue it. For those that are new and haven't been, just a few comments here that they, what you'll find there will be a lot different than living conditions uh, in the U.S. Uh, you'll find people that have some, some fairly great needs. Uh, there will be a significant difference between uh, what we're used to and what we have over here would be considered highly wealthy and what uh, they would be in poverty. And that uh, just be prepared for, for seeing that. Uh, but I would also caution that just because they don't have some material possessions. Doesn't mean they don't have uh, a lot of dignity. They don't have a lot of intelligence. Uh, they are they're some of the brightest people I've ever met. Uh, some of the most faithful people I've ever met and spiritually giants uh, I've met have been over in Zambia. And so, I guess you will see some disparity in, uh, in uh, economic conditions. Uh, you're not gonna find that same disparity in other conditions. One of the things we try and do is treat everyone with respect. Uh, we, you may not speak Tonga, but I found that a smile goes a long way. A uh, little contact with them and interaction is, is, uh, is a good thing. We're trying to give them a day of dignity and, uh, and in as many ways as we can, we want to make that as good for them as we can. Uh, you may want to make some small gifts, clothing or something like that for somebody that maybe really touches your heart. Um, we were going to, we'll probably give you some instructions when we get there about how to give those out because we don't want to, to be, uh, we can cause a stampede if we start handing out things uh, in a way that uh, everybody sees it happening and it, uh, it can cause a lot of disorder, a lot of uh, problems and even have some safety risks is, is how, it's, how it's done. But you'll also find a lot of people are, they're not afraid to ask for something. And uh, that's just part of their cultural, it's acceptable to them. And if you say no, that's not a problem either. They are, they're not offended by it. They're in the same position as if they hadn't asked. So they don't see that as, as, a, as a negative, but uh, just be aware that you may get uh, uh, quite a few questions or requests uh, for assistance. 
Okay, coming close to the end here, just to make sure that your payments are up to date, you can check the schedule of the booklet to, to make sure about that. And uh, I think there may have been something in the email that Ellie sent out with the, the statements as well. Make sure you've got your photo turned in for the team directory, your vaccination are up to date. And if you're getting your own tickets, instead of having Zambia Medical Mission get them, make sure you give us a copy of your flight itinerary so we can coordinate when you're arriving and make sure we've got people uh, there to pick you up. Um, this may be a good time as we get close to the end. If you want to unmute, uh, ask a question or something, I'll try and do my best because there are probably some things that uh, might have come to your mind and I didn't uh, didn't cover it as well as I should have. Or if you just want to email me later or call me later, you feel free to do that. I'll be happy to do it. You learned how to do it? Hey, Ray. Yeah. Yeah, this is Craig speaking. Uh, we haven't, um, can we use the same uh, digital photo that we've used in the past or do you want a new one this year? Sure, it's fine. It's fine to use one you've used in the past. Okay, thank you. you still, do you still look like that picture? No. I, I haven't changed in a number <laughs> of years, so yeah. <clears throat> thank you. <laughs> the same ugly person, huh? Okay, I don't see any others. I hope I'm not missing something here, but uh, like I said, if I, something comes up, comes to your mind, mm -hmm. feel free to email or give there me a call is. or something like that. And we'll see what we can uh, try and learn, try and work it out for you. Hey, Ray. Yes. Uh, do you know if some of our vaccinations do, do, do some of them we have to have done it, redone every 10 years? Yes, and that should be on your yellow card. It should tell you when it expires. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And if not, you probably can ask your uh, the county medical uh, wherever you get those shots, wherever they do the update of the records. You can probably ask them, and they can tell you. But uh, I think in most cases it shows how long they're good for. Okay. Thanks. You bet. Well, we've got a good group going this year. And if, like I said, if there's a few others that you'd like to, you know, that might want to come, we've still got some spaces. And love to have them use their help. So if there's no other comments or questions, we're going to wrap this up here tonight. And uh, probably the most important thing you can do in addition to all of the planning you're doing and preparing and getting things together to, to Pack and go is to make sure you pray on a regular basis for this uh, this effort. Pray that God will uh, use us in ways that uh, we can preach the good news and we can provide some medical care and that we will be the types of people and examples that he wants us to be as we uh, strive to serve him in Zambia. I'm going to, the bottom of the page is a, is a brief uh, prayer in the language of Chitanga, which is where we'll be going. And, uh, and then a translation underneath it, Palumba Kapati Leza Aboleleke. Thank you very much, and God be with you. I want to end with that. Love all of y'all. Appreciate you. Looking forward to being with you in Zambia. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, everybody else. Thank you, Ray. Hi, Lisa. Oh, hello. I miss your face. Oh, Jenny girl. Oh, let's see if I can turn me on. Here I are. There. Okay. Oh, there <laughs> she is. Hi, hello. everybody. Good hello, to see you Lisa. after so hello, long. Lisa. Hi. I know. Hello, hello. Hello. Oh. Hi, Lisa. Hi. It's so good to hear you all. Oh, my gosh. You all look great. You haven't changed a bit, none of it. My bad. <laughs> And hi, Ellie. Hope you're having a good world to win tour. Okay.